Hi, everybody. It's Maria Delgado. First of all, sorry for being inactive for a long time. I'll try to explain the reasons in another video, but the important thing is that right now I'm back. I'm extremely excited to share with you all this video because it's the best experience I've had in my life so far. And actually, the best thing is that you can apply for it. So let's get started. As you know, I'm a World Science Scholar. As stated in the World Science Festival Pay, which is the foundation of this opportunity, this program selects a small group of international students with extraordinary mathematical talent and provides them with an unparalleled opportunity to apply their abilities in unexplored disciplines. In my case, I got selected as a World Science Scholar in the cohort of 2021. I still remember the day when I received that email where WSF told me that I had been selected to be part of this cohort. As I remember, it was in my 10th grade graduation day, so it was so cool, it couldn't be better. Along the year, we've been taking incredible courses, ranging from astrophysics, biology, computational universe, they are not the average courses you find online. They are really, really powerful. The professors are incredible and the way they teach their subjects gives new perspective and awakens us to new hiding passions. We, scholars, have had the opportunity to interact and collaborate in projects together, as well as interact in the live sessions with our professors and the WSF team. Okay, this was a general idea of what is WSS, but the important thing in this video is that WSF invited us to attend the first ever World Science Scholar Festival in New York. To be honest, I still can't believe that I've been there with this group of passionate students and the amazing team of WSF, WSS and WSU. Okay, so how did it all start? 12 June. I received an email from our program coordinator. It started like... I mean, <laughs> when you read this, your face is something that cannot be described. So was mine. <laughs> the point here is that I couldn't attend the end of the year event. So this information was completely new to me. Our scholar stat became quite crazy in terms of believing it or not. It sounded like a really big, big effort if they were really doing this. Two weeks later, we received the confirmation form and they started talking about flights and hotels. In my case, we started with the ESTA process to be able to enter the United States, but I couldn't believe it, to be honest. From July to September, we talked a lot with WSF to arrange everything. Special mention to Tammy and Valerie for everything, thank you so much. Okay, and then the day arrived. Monday, 26th September. Traveling to Madrid because the flight on the 27th was so early and we didn't want to miss it. We really enjoyed the eight hours we stayed in that beautiful plane. I spent most of the time sleeping or reading. We arrived at the John F. Kennedy Airport, a little bit higher because of the time zones, but wow, <laughs> my first time being and like seeing the United States. Just at the exit, Alex, thank you so much for everything too, was waiting for my family and me with a big War Science Festival logo. When I saw it, I feel like I was in a dream. We arrived at the hotel one hour since then and I saw for the first time Robin and Robert. I think that my face describes everything. Robin and Robert said that when I was done in my room, I could go up to the penthouse because something was waiting for me. Okay, this is a random fact. I actually need to show it. My room was the best one, 314. When I first saw James, it was like, oh yeah, I'm dreaming. This person that has been supporting me and all these colors is real in front of me. He gave me everything that is in this photo right here. And then we talk a little bit. After this, 
I met Monica in real life too. Another scholar from the 2021 cohort that I already knew for a while online. We went walking, buying some stuff for our families and taking a lot of photos. When we came back to the penthouse, other scholars had arrived too, so we spent a lot of time there. We did a circle with a lot of chairs, and every time someone arrived, we made it bigger and bigger and bigger, to the point that it didn't fit in the room. It was strange because we didn't take like a lot of time to gain this type of confidence to talk to each other, as strangers usually do. It was like, we already know each other, we know about the academic part of the other person. Let's talk about our normal lives, though I think that they were only normal for us because the adults weren't understanding a lot. But wow, that connection we made since the first day. Impressive. <laughs> On Thursday morning, we visited Columbia University. That was our initial event. We went to the popping hall and one part of the 8th floor was reserved for us, scholars, WSF. We had an overview of the week by James, then an opening talk by Julian Small, the president of World Science University Education, and finally, the executive director of RISE, Mark German, explained to us the RISE program an opportunity extremely good for teenagers. Sadly, Professor Brian Greeney couldn't come, but he did a Zoom with us to give the lecture special relativity in role dimensions. In the second place, we went to NYU. We had a talk about innovations and building a startup in the Leslie E. Lab by Frank Rimalowski. He also explained to us how is NYU in general terms and the entrepreneurship projects you can start in their lab with the events they have there. It was really helpful. After this, we went to the Center of Cosmology and Particle Physics in NYU. I'm going to try to summarize it, but like literally I could do a whole video just talking about this. Basically, we went to the quantum part of the building. We visited two labs, one for quantum materials and the other one of quantum computers. And yes, we saw quantum computers in real life. PhD students guided us through the content. It was really impressive how all the concepts we already know about quantum computing are applied in real labs. Lab Shabani was the name of the group of researchers who were guiding us through all of this. We also got a mini lecture about their work and what they are currently doing, plus a demonstration of quantum experiments and non-quantum experiments. The funny part comes here. PhD physics students shouldn't try to be cooks. Let me explain to you why. So after all of this, they started making ice cream for us, but not a normal one. What? with liquid nitrogen. The cooks didn't even know the recipe. And we're seeing distractions on their phones all the time. It was extremely funny. They didn't even care about measurements. Let the ice cream be an experiment without sense. The chocolate wasn't mixing with the cream and the milk. Then nitrogen was really difficult to use. However, I need to say that this part of the day was necessary. And I will not forget it in my life. <laughs> The interaction we had with the PhD candidates while they were trying to do it was so cool. We understood our jokes, we talked, we loved together. The ice cream turned fine, by the way. Here's a photo of it. On the second day, we went to the Advanced Science Research Center. As stated in their website, The buildings were beautiful. <laughs> when we entered, we received this, 
It's like a folder with some papers in it that I will show later. And went to the enormous auditorium they have inside the building. Kendra Kruger started the day with her talk, A New Era of Scientific Inquiry at CUNY. Professor Rain V. Legion, the director of the Nanoscience Initiative, gave the lecture Hacking Biology for Nanotechnology, providing us with a completely new idea for the future. Professor Mande All Four, with her lecture Venom, Heal or Cure, gave us a new perspective of the animals and medicine. Finally, Professor Andrea Alou, the director of the Photonics Initiative, exploded our minds in a good way, with his lecture. From cloaks to one-way mirrors, tricking light with metal materials. I would like to remark that I wasn't interested in photonics at all, but after meeting Andrea Alou, I've completely changed my thoughts. It is so interesting and a very, very powerful feel. Then we had some group activities, visiting labs and doing some experiments. In the afternoon, we went to the Intrepid Museum. I cannot talk about this at all, because I had some problems and I couldn't be there. But as far as I know, my peers had the opportunity to learn about sea, space and air through history and exhibitions. Then, the third day. Wow. We visited the campus of Columbia University, thanks to the tour they gave to us. We learned about the ways of enrolling, applying, and important information to consider while looking at universities in general. I need to say that I will live on a campus like that my whole life. I'm very excited to go to university when I finish school next two years. After this, three students from different backgrounds, plus James, did a very helpful Q&A session and talked about the college experience, advice, tips, we went once again to the 8th floor of the Pippin Hall and met in real life Professor Kumrum Baffa, Professor Barbara Natterson Horowitz and Professor Stephen Wolfram. They gave us their own lectures, Extreme Theory, Human Exceptionalism and Wolfram's Life and a little bit of Wolfram language. After this, we had a reception with them. They gift us their books and sign them for us. I think I can show you the books. So the first one is from Professor Krum Krum Baba. The second one, you can guess it. And the third one is from Stephen Wolfram, Professor Stephen Wolfram. Thank you so much. They are amazing. It was awesome to talk with incredible people in science, role models. We enjoyed the lectures a lot. Zoom was so cool as well, but in real life, there is more human interaction, human feelings and emotions. I don't know how to explain it, to be honest. I hope you all understand this. In tonight, we went to the Rockefeller Center, top of the rock. One more time, I don't have words to describe it. That peaceful moment you get when you're in the top floor, looking at Manhattan from one of the biggest buildings, thinking about all the people that you're actually seeing without noticing. The strong wind that hits you to remind you that you're not dreaming, that this is real, and everything with the company of WSF team and its callers. Sunday was a sad day. It was a day we went back to our countries, in other words, to reality. In the morning, we visited the American Museum of Natural History. It was so cool, but it was sad. People were living in a tower. Strangers in real life, who became your best friends on the first day, were actually living. Each time we were less and less and less and less. And then my turn came. I was the one leaving. It was extremely sad. 
but I think that I didn't show it on the outside because I found it really difficult to express my emotions and here I am missing my friends a lot my first friends the people who understand me the people that I understand our connections cannot be described but now I know that I'm not as crazy as the rest of the world thinks I am normal but in my way Okay, let's not talk about sadness. James, Robin, Robert, Danny, Aaron, Gillian, all the team of WSS, WSS program, John Templeton Foundation, Sediment Futures, Simon's Foundation, everyone in general. Thank you so much for everything you've done. This event has shown me a lot of things academically and emotionally. You've opened a lot of doors in my life. You've created the connection with all the people who are now my first friends. This experience you've given to us is the best one in my life so far. And I will never, never forget it. I cannot be more thankful with you. You fulfill my dreams. So this was my recap of my trip to New York with WSF. I hope you've liked this video. Let me know if you have any doubts in the comments. I will be trying to reply to all of them. And yeah, see you soon.